okay take a look at this eye here you see we're doing the vertical arrow technique and we're going to do an onion layer peeling you're going to peel into your own thoughts into your own distortions and this of course is taken from the feel good handbook you see and no doubt we've all had something like this before a thought all people suck I can't trust anyone or I can't trust people or something to the effect of that right these thoughts come into our minds and just because they're uh, just because you think them or just because they're inside of your head doesn't necessarily mean they're true but we do want to hold them valid and one of the best ways to free yourself from any kind of depression or anxiety or negative feelings and to sort yourself out is to write them down and then have rational responses now in this vertical arrow technique here what we do is uh, we take the automatic thoughts and you write them down and then you ask yourself the question if that were true what would that mean so for example all people suck I cannot trust anyone for me the next thought that would come if that were true what would that mean it would mean that I couldn't have any friends or anyone I could ever trust okay and there we have the rational responses and then you keep asking well if that were true if it were true that you couldn't have any friends or you couldn't ever trust anyone what would that mean and then you keep peeling you keep asking that same question until you get down to the bottom for me this is always that root core assumption and it's it's pretty uh, pretty dark it's pretty you know this is the shadow that we're talking about digging up and bringing to the surface and then of course understanding where it comes from and how this is where the enlightenment of the eye comes in and as you see I'm going to show you something here all of the lines here are sketched out and it looks very cartoonish right now and in a few seconds you're gonna see this come alive into a real eye it's already starting and as you see we're making a space here for light this here you don't usually draw when you're thinking of an eye and you're having all these odd shapes here but in a minute we're gonna blend and smudge and it's gonna become a little bit more realistic than it is now and this is similar to what you do when you work with cognitive behavior therapy and the uh, vertical arrow technique there is a correlation between understanding and seeing as an artist and also using something called logic they do tie together and uh, in a minute we're gonna go further okay so as you see I've done some smudging here and I'm just gonna use the four fingers and you want to go into the direction of the shape that you're smudging like in this area I'm doing circular but in this area here I'm not going to do circular I'm going to do this across because this is the eyebrow you see you want to make the shape come alive with the particular kinds of strokes here you're not going to do circular you're not going to do across but you're going to do all the way down because there is an implication of a nose you see without drawing it here you're gonna go across like this because you want to emphasize the eye socket you see and already without having done anything else this is already starting to come alive and this corresponds to what you're going to be doing when you use the vertical arrow technique you see check out the feeling good handbook I have this uh, small here this is called the feeling good handbook the new mood therapy by David M Burns MD and this is taken from page 263 starting in 263 the vertical arrow technique in this chapter you will learn two different ways to identify silent assumptions the first is a startlingly effective method called the vertical arrow technique which allows you to probe your inner psyche the vertical arrow technique is also a spin-off of the double column method introduced in chapter four in which you learn how to write down your upsetting auto thoughts 
So what is the, the, why are you doing this? What's the uh, deal? Because this is the cause, this is how you dig to the cause of your depression, your anxiety, and your negative moods. Whether you're someone who's extremely depressed and who needs counseling, or you're someone who just is dealing with grief, you know, life's happenings, divorces, deaths, uh, job losses, uh, marriages, winning the lottery, you know, good things can also cause stress uh, the same way as negative things sometimes. So here it is. It helps you build happiness and self-esteem, okay? And um, even if you are feeling better, there is a difference between feeling better and getting better. Feeling better simply indicates the painful symptoms have temporarily disappeared. Getting better implies number one understanding why you got depressed number two knowing why and how you got better this is important this involves a mastery of the particular self-help techniques that worked specifically for you so that you can reapply them and make them work again whenever you choose three acquiring self-confidence and self-esteem self-confidence based on the knowledge that you have a good chance of being reasonably successful in personal relationships and in your career self-esteem is the capacity to experience maximal self-love and joy whether or not you are successful at any point in your life and number four locating the deeper causes of your depression so this is how this vertical air technique works okay and basically um I took down some thoughts that I think we all can relate to, okay? So we're going to go through this quickly. All people suck. I can't trust anyone. The rational response, there are always exceptions to the rule. Trust is a matter of degree, and it's not black or white. There are people that have been trustworthy in the past, okay? But then, let's say, if this were true, what would that mean? Well, for me personally, that would mean I couldn't have any friends or anyone I could ever trust. Well, if that were true, if I couldn't have any friends or anyone I could ever trust, what would that mean for me? You might have a different meaning, okay? You might have a different automatic thought. But then again, you peel away. Well, if that were true, what would that mean? That would mean I'd be all alone and the world is a dangerous place. Well, if it were true that the world was a dangerous place. Jehovah, 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 Jehovah. Jehovah, 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 those are nothing but worldly people. Who do, who do they think they are telling me that I'm... I have mental issues. I'm a Jehovah's Witness elder. I'm a man. Yes, honey. Yes, you are, honey. Mm-hmm, honey. Anyway, where you going, boo? None of your business. Why don't you keep moving on? You're a woman. You don't have any... You don't have any right to ask me. Honey, I'm going to ask you if I want to, boo. I don't care if I am a woman, boo. I, especially because I'm a woman, I'm going to ask. Well, I'm your head. You better submit to my headship. You ain't my head, boo. You ain't married to me. I'm your elder. You better do what I say. Now get. <laughs> okay, honey, boo. I'm going to let you slide right now, boo. But I know you go. I know you got something up, boo. You got a camera, boo. You all dressed up like you going on vacation to Hawaii, boo. Mm-mm, honey. I'm going to tell your wife you up to something. You better shut up before I disfellowship you. Oh, honey, I done hit a nerve, didn't I? <laughs> I'm going to let you slide today, boo. But best believe I'm coming back to you another time, boo. <laughs> And look at this apostate right here. He done caused so much trouble in my congregation, boo. He said, honey, let me tell you something about him. Okay, honey, you got to promise not to gossip, okay, honey? You got to promise. Do you promise, boo? Okay, boo, you see them cards right here, honey, boo? So what he did, boo? <laughs> what he did, boo, he sent them postcards to an elder, boo, in my congregation, honey, child. And that, that precious elder, honey. That precious elder got, he got 
I'd ask to be stepped down, boo. Well, boo, I think what they did, boo, because they thought that elder was sending them cards, boo, and that elder was trying to tell everybody, oh, no, honey, that's this man right here. And they were like, no, honey, your name is tied to it some kind of way because we done Googled you on the Internet, boo, and we ain't too sure you ain't behind that. And he was like, I don't even know this man. We, I had my wife call him and tell him to shut up before we get him arrested by the FBI. Well, they said, well, honey, as you can see, the FBI ain't doing nothing, boo, so we're going to have to ask you to step down because too many of these cars done passed around, boo. Too much has gone down, boo. <laughs> this place and that I'd be all alone, what would that mean? That would mean I really have no need to be alive or to try to live on. Well, if that were true, what would that mean? Well, that would mean I should just kill myself and just die. Okay, well, if that were true, what would that mean? Well, I should just not live. Well, if that were true, what would that mean? And I can't go any further than that, you see? I can't go any further than that. So here I've dug down where this comes from. This is the root. This is the, the root of it all. And even though I might be feeling better at the surface level, if I don't dig deep, I'm going to be susceptible to this over and over again. It's not going to be completely done. For me, I found out this stems from two places. It stems from uh, having a malignant uh, incubator, a uh, malignant narcissistic incubator, uh, and her implicit signaling throughout my childhood, as well as the suicide in bed within the Jehovah's Witness cult in the Watchtower. So uh, these are the two things that I think uh, are the culprits of this. Now, here we have the rational responses. So once again right here that would mean I'd be all alone and the world is a dangerous place there are safe places and people in my past and present the library for example for me feels like a safe place and I also feel safe at home and at work okay now once again if it were true that I'd be all alone and the world is a dangerous place what would that mean um, it would mean that I really have no need to be alive or to try to live on a rational response that I came up with is I have every reason to be alive simply because I exist many people say they benefit from things I do okay but let's say if it were true that I have no need to be alive or to live on what would that mean well I should just kill myself and miss out on 420 <laughs> oh Jehovah honey Anyway, honey, I like this eye, honey. It's very enlightening, honey. Be looking at me, staring at me, honey. Oh, no, is that a person looking at me, honey, pal? Sister Smith wants to draw some eyes, honey, boo. Look at that, boo. I'm going to make these little... So, honey, look at this here, boo. Look at this, boo. What we did, we kind of took these lines, and we don't make them too abrupt, honey. We kind of just softened them up with this around here like that, boo. Look at that, you see? And then what you do, you take your finger like that, boo. Look at that, boo. You don't need no toilet paper, boo. Save a tree, boo. No, I think you need some toilet paper, Sister Billy Bertha. You let me do this the way I want to do it, boo. Look at this, see? You don't got to be no expert at drawing these eyes, boo, and getting some illumination and enlightenment into yourself, boo. Look at that, boo, you see? Look at that. Look at that, Jehovah's marvelous creation, honey. Not too bad, Sister Smith, not too bad. Yeah, boo, I'm going to keep working on it. One of the things you want to remember when drawing an eye is that you want to make the illusion of three dimension on a, a two dimensional surface, on a flat surface. So one of the things that usually happens on an eye is that the upper area right underneath the eyebrow, this area here usually is lighter because it is a rounder shape, it goes out more. The socket of the eye and the skull, the brow ridge there goes out further. So when you take an eraser, I hope this eraser doesn't do it too bad. This is a cheap eraser. I'm just using this to demonstrate. You're going to make 
a white eraser mark. You're going to draw with your eraser. You see that? And I might have to get a different eraser. This isn't the best eraser here, but you're going to erase and probably reblend so that you don't have such abrupt lines where it actually turns out to look like this right here. You see? You see this area right here? It's lighter than this area, than the fold underneath here, you see? And this gives you the illusion, the viewer, that this is a, an eyebrow socket, that there's a three-dimensional object that you're looking at when it's actually just marks put down on a flat surface, you see? And how does this fit in with the vertical arrow technique in CBT, Cognitive Behavior Therapy, and using this technique on yourself? Because this is just an illusion. This is an illusion. This isn't the, an eye. This is just marks put down on a piece of paper. It's a flat two-dimensional surface. But yet, yeah, you're seeing an eye. And this is how you put, how you look at it art and when you're getting ready to draw realistic art. Anyone can do it. You can learn it in 24 hours or even less. But for most people, they have it stuck in their head. They have a distortion, a cognitive distortion, much like these automatic thoughts and much like if you have this book, you're going to be reading about a whole lot of different cognitive distortions, common cognitive distortions that people go through when they deal with depression and anxiety and things like that, okay? And trauma even. Trauma can give you a lot of cognitive distortions, especially if you've had severe trauma, okay? But um, we're going to keep working on this eye, but um, I figured I'll try something new. <laughs> I don't know if, if it's going to go over well, but I figured I'd combine drawing realistic eyes and faces and things like that with maybe doing a little bit of a cognitive behavior therapy examples of how I use certain techniques on myself and of course you're not going to have the same exact responses but what you want to do is you want to catch these negative thoughts down okay and automatic thoughts are right underneath if then if this is true then such and such must be true okay and they are short statements uh, all people suck. Uh, I'll never have friends. Um, I'll never, I'll never achieve whatever it is you wanting to achieve, right? Um, I'll never be able to quit smoking if you're trying to quit smoking. I'll never be able to lose weight if you're trying to diet. I'll never be able to find that that perfect mate if you're single. And you can just peel them away and get a, a deep insight into yourself. And you can heal these things. All right. Thanks for watching. Check out this book if you want to. It's a really great book. Like dip it as you. Honey, look at this right here. Yeah, go ahead, honey. This is Sister Billy Bertha Lee Smith. Oh, honey. Yes, honey. Thank you. Look at that, honey. This is something good. Some so good for food, food, and good food. So honey, we're gonna eat this from here today, honey. The city life has changed your life. Oh, look at all the changes. Expose the gray of your conviction. I got it. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. see I've kind of darkened in, emphasized certain things, I've done some smudging and it's starting to look a little bit more realistic and as you can see 
you see some of these subtle gradations between the lightest area and then some of the darkest areas like this is the darkest you've got some light here which now you can see this turns into what you would look at as a reflection of light and you have to include these things in your drawing you can't just draw an eye most people just see an eye that don't really look at things as an artist but now that you're seeing things a little differently and I'm teaching you to see things differently you have to include that and interpret that in your in your work you see and this is something you don't notice right away when you're putting things down but later on these subtle nuances and this is a lot like your consciousness your consciousness has the everyday surface thought and awareness but underneath your everyday awareness are layers and layers and levels it's like an elevator there's stairs and stairs and flights and levels that you're not aware of until you write them down you catch them you can catch them anytime it just takes a piece of paper and a pen and the willingness to see things differently once you see things more realistically you're going to be able to put it down on paper this is the whole thing with learning how to draw being able to see things differently because reality isn't just one tunnel vision it is a whole big picture a whole big picture of things do you have the big picture of yourself are you willing to dig deeper and to face your own shadow are you willing to do that and it takes some courage but it can be a lot of fun and I think together we can do this and in the process you can not only learn something about yourself but you can also perhaps learn how to draw an eye a realistic eye or maybe even a portrait a face or anything you know open up and unlock the doors of both logic and creativity all right I hope you've enjoyed this Okay, honey, I kind of like that eye, honey, but it's watching me, boo. I don't know, boo. And then 420, boo, that's against Jehovah, boo. Oh, Jehovah, honey. And this, look at this, boo. She ain't, what is she doing, boo? I know I've been on this thing, but these sheep are still trying to figure out what the heck she doing. And, boo, did you comb your hair before you get out, boo? Uh-uh, honey, she is... I don't even know if she brushed her teeth, boo. You need to take a bath and, and groom yourself before you come out here preaching to these sheep, boo. What is wrong with you, boo? You need to bathe and groom yourself properly before you present to these sheep out here. Okay, this sheep is not taking you serious, honey. This sheep is wondering what is wrong with you. And that, but what is this in your hair? You got lint and all kinds of dandruff, boo. You need some bath or something, boo. A flea dip, boo. This sheep are cleaner than you, boo. And they're sheep. I know, this woman is disgusting looking. <laughs> yeah, honey, somebody help her, boo. JW Servants, Miss Pioneer for life, boo. You need a bath for life, boo. <laughs> Feed my little sheep, Jesus said. Well, the Bible also says cleanliness is next to holy and godliness, boo. And I don't know where you left off, boo. Anyway, honey, that's all I got to tell you, honey. <laughs>